we'll be talking about uh, the progress that has been made in as far as ensuring gender inclusivity and gender parity in the country, in, in the country rather. And you'll be speaking to Professor Margaret Kobia. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you. She's the cabinet secretary in charge of uh, public service, youth and gender affairs. And she's here to talk about, we understand that uh, this week you'll be having a very has it already begun a very important meeting of uh, um, ministers in charge of women affairs in, uh, at, at the Commonwealth? Can you just take us through that before you delve into matters affecting the country? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, we, Kenya, is hosting the 12th uh, Women uh, Affairs Ministers. That mm -hmm. means ministers from the Commonwealth who are charged with the responsibility of gender affairs and women affairs. This is the 12th Commonwealth uh, Ministers' Meeting mm -hmm. that uh, is going to be hosted by Kenya from 16 to 20th. Uh, we particularly start with a meeting of the civil society mm -hmm. where Commonwealth Foundation and the FINDA Kenya is leading uh, because, you know, with Sustainable Development Goals, goal number five, on gender equality and women empowerment, mm -hmm. uh, we work, uh, we don't leave anybody behind, so we work with the, you know, the so civil society. So th the highlights of the, this meeting, of course, Kenya is very happy to host because it raises the profile for Kenya, and we are targeting about 54 countries of the How Commonwealth. Many? 54 countries 54. Of, the com of the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. They might not all come, but at least we're expecting 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, th the delegations will be there led by the ministers. Okay. And uh, what we know that um, globally, mm -hmm. gender issues uh, and the women empowerment mm -hmm. is a global concern. Looking at it as sustainable development goal number five, mm -hmm. looking at also the Commonwealth, where they have decided to make a contribution towards the, the, the sustainable development goal number five, mm -hmm. that this meeting takes place every three years where um, ministers of women affairs and gender affairs come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. just to review the progress made and then chart the way forward. Okay. And that is also very much related with um, at the national level, of course, Kenya has always been in the forefront in having strategies and policies of how we empower women and also achieve gender equality. Okay. So we, lo we look at this effort that it is right from national, then it goes regional, to go to the Commonwealth, up to the up to United Nations. And at the same time, what we are going to discuss with the Commonwealth ministers is also going to find its way to the Commonwealth Hand of Government Forum, okay. which is going to take place in Rwanda. Uh, November next th this year. All right, we'll, we'll get um, a, a preview of uh, what is happening in the countries of Kenya. But before we do that, mm -hmm. so these meetings have been happening since 1985. You say three every three years. Mm -hmm. I don't know what gains that you can look at now and say they are a resultant of that initiative of uh, ministers in charge or responsible for women affairs. Mm -hmm. Gender equality and women empowerment, uh, of course, is a goal that works towards improving the quality of life, not only for women for youth and also for general citizenry. There have been many gains, mm -hmm. especially looking at uh, the pillars which the common world works around. Uh, some of the gains are <coughs> on women economic empowerment. We have seen uh, the more we empower women uh, economically, they are able to take charge of their own lives, like take their children to school, provide good health, provide um, education for their children. So we can see in economic empowerment, where we were 10 years ago, is not okay. the same case now, right now. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of women, because of starting small businesses, they have been able to access even loan from government and also from the banks, because their businesses are growing. Mm -hmm. Then we have areas on gender-based violence. That is another pillar that the Commonwealth works around, mm -hmm. and um, we have seen legal provisions, we have seen safe houses, we have seen preparation of the, 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 the police, okay. involvement in how people report when they have gender-based violence uh, experiences and how the police are dealing with it. So I think, and also we have also another area they work around, mm -hmm. that is gender and climate change. Uh, that pillar uh, is very important because we know the climate change, how it has affected on the, the, in terms of um, how people, those, most of people who farm are women, and if they were the, climate, the effect of the climate change, of course it can depend their, okay. their, 
their property, but turning around, mm -hmm. being able to plant trees to take care of the environment mm -hmm. uh, through gender lens, we can see, we have seen some progress. Of course, it's not uh, the much progress as we would have wanted to see. Mm -hmm. There are always challenges, and that's why every three years it's important to come back on the table and see what progress have we made. Are there the emerging issues? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and talking about that, uh, so you say the progress has been seen in the economic economic inclusivity mm. that uh, women are able to take care of their families. Mm. But what's more important for you? Is it the economic um, inclusivity or is it the representation, especially when you talk about elective positions and appointed mm. positions for mm. women? I think you cannot really separate it. It looks like all interventions need to work together. There is what we call uh, leadership and decision making. And this is where we are finding how can decision ma ma making be more inclusive mm -hmm. and at the highest level. We have also seen some gains. Look at the appointed, appointed position, especially in Kenya, with the coming of the constitution, okay. where we are told if you are appointing anybody in the public service, mm -hmm. ensure that you have two dance. Two dance is not of any uh, one gender. Mm -hmm. We have seen a state corporation now, at the board level, we have at least from less than 15%, now we stand at 21%. That Which means one is that? State corporations, all of them. Mm -hmm. we can say on average, they stand now at 21% mm -hmm. as members of the board. Mm -hmm. We have also seen where we never even had chairpersons of the of the board. Right. Now we are 7% as chairpersons of the board. You can see the progress is slow, mm -hmm. but at least we have figures we can quote. Okay. And when it comes to senior government uh, appointment, mm -hmm. we are at 28%. So okay. I think uh, I, 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 we are I'll progress. briefly be looking at uh, the numbers that mm. we have because mm. I understand that we have about 1,930 elective positions in the country. But mm. when we look at uh, the representation of women, it's yeah. actually, uh, let me see if I can get that quickly, it's about 175, but I'll be clarifying that figure shortly. Yeah. I want us to cross over to Nakuru County, where Mary Ann Yambura is our reporter there, mm. and she'll be speaking about the representation that we see in that Nakuru County Assembly. We understand there are 78 members of county assemblies, 55 of them are elected. 23 are nominated. There are five women who are elected out of uh, the seats that are 55. So you can see five uh, out of 55, then 21 women were nominated as MCAs out of 23, mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that there is that equality, uh, that uh, at least a minimum of a third is uh, represented by either gender. So Miriam, what is the picture like beyond these elective positions in Akur and how do residents feel about the progress made in representation or inclusivity of women in uh, the affairs of the county? Some uh, Nakuru uh, County government is uh, making strides to ensure that uh, they uh, meet uh, the threshold, their third or rather two thirds uh, threshold. As you mentioned, it's true that uh, out of 55 uh, elected uh, uh, ward representatives, we only have five uh, women who've been elected to that post. So that's showing that there is an issue. But uh, uh, in order to make sure that uh, they meet uh, the two third thre threshold, rather. Uh, 21 MCAs, or rather 21 women MC, uh, MCAs were nominated to that post. Uh, if you calculate well, a third of uh, 78 uh, ward representatives gives you at least 25% uh, percent of uh, women, and that they've met, uh, because if you add, uh, uh, or rather five out of the five uh, elected women MCAs and 21, that makes 26 uh, women representatives. But in regard to the uh, county government, uh, we only have uh, two CECs who are appointed to that uh, or rather appointed to uh, the CEC posts, that makes it uh, out of the 10 uh, departments. So that means that they've not yet met uh, that full threshold. But uh, joining me here just uh, to tell us more, we'll sample views of our residents, Nakuru County residents. Maybe if we start off with your name kindly, you could tell us, Unadhani wanawake wanahisi komba wameacho nyuma katika ukiangalia katika county government, uh, we've only seen uh, 26 percent, or rather 26 women out of 78 uh, MCAs. Yes, my name is Martha Morning. Uh, I can say for sure, for the past five years, we have seen a lot of improvement in women empowerment, and we thank government for that. But still, we need more to be done as women because uh, we know when you educate a woman, you educate the world. And what are, women are really performing very well, especially even in the offices. So it is better the number to be increased because we as women, we are capable. Long is the time where the woman position was in the kitchen. Right now, woman position is outside there to make the world, to change the world, to make the world a, a very nice place. And uh, it is my prayer 
that especially the government of Nakuru, where I am, that they can hear our plea as women and even increase the number, not only in the government, but also in other parastatus. Because women can do more, women can do better, only when given a chance. Yeah. So you think, uh, what exactly is the solution that, that the county government as well as the national government need to put forth? Because we've seen uh, for four times uh, the two-thirds gender bill has failed to pass in parliament. So what solutions do you think uh, need to be put forth? There are some ladies that we have already, they are already in parliament. Those are the ladies who, we as ladies, we are looking at them. Yeah? Because me as Martha, I cannot go to the parliament and pass any motion. They are the only people who should go there and pass a motion. So it is our prayer that those who are there to go and pass the motion. Yeah. Well, uh, some uh, uh, great sentiments there. Thank you so much. Well, uh, we'll I'll just uh, get the view of uh, one uh, uh, individual here who will tell us. Uh, we've seen women being empowered. Tumeona wana wake wake wakiwa empowered. Lakini unahisi kwamba wale wanaito kwa nini boy child bado wametengwa ama unaona vipi? Ah, mimi naona ni kama wametengwa kusema ukweli lakini wanawake na ningependa ongezewe zaidi igawaje wasisi hao baba ya wanaume wasao boy child sababu, sababu mali mingi unaonekana unaonekana mali mingi ameachiliwa sana kusema ukweli ndio kwa hivyo nadhani nini hasa inafaa kufanyika mimi nataka serikali kwa sababu serikali ya jubili imeangalia wa mama sana ningesema hata iangalie mambo ya wanaume ju wanaume wameachwa nyuma kusema ukweli wameachwa nyuma umbali sana ukiangalia kama kwa, kwa kampuni kama yangu kampuni yangu yes imeajiri imeajiri wana, 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 wanawake na wanaume kwa jumla lakini ningependa wanawake ongezewe zaidi lakini wasisahau mambo ya wanaume True. Uh, well, some there you have it. Uh, those are just two views uh, from uh, residents of Nakuru County. Uh, some saying uh, that uh, there are strides that have been made uh, to ensure that uh, women empowerment is stronger and uh, that more needs to be done actually even in the county government and uh, also that uh, men need not be left behind in relation to empowerment. So that is what we have for you right now. Back to you, Sam. All right, so uh, that's the situation in Nakuru. And of course, there's a very interesting conversation that uh, the gentleman there brings in that uh, might we be risking empowering the girl child um, at, uh, at the disadvantage of the boy child? I don't know, how, how do you balance all these issues? Because yes, um, the woman has to be empowered, but mm -hmm. how do you ensure that the, the, the societal expectations mm -hmm. are, are not um, missed? I think some, as you have heard, at the county level, mm -hmm. it was very clear in the constitution that if you don't elect it, uh, a hand of the women, then you nominate. Mm -hmm. And of course, what, what that means that if you have very few women uh, elected, then you have to nominate so many that brings quite it has implication on the wage bill. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, nomination also sometimes gives a window, maybe you're bringing some people who might not be very qualified. Mm -hmm. That's why we say you nominate initially, mm -hmm. but as we move forward, I think you empower them to go through the elective position. Right. Therefore, I think it's only at the, national, at the um, parliament where we find that since that provision was not properly dealt with, mm -hmm. uh, then we find the, it was left to the parliament to make a decision or a registration, right. which they have not been able to make. Uh -huh. In fact, right now we are beginning actually to want 50 50 uh -huh. because that is our target. Uh -huh. It's just a tall target, but it is possible. So, coming to your question, how are we balancing between empowering women and empowering men? Uh -huh. I, I don't think we want to be drilled by maybe contribution and comment that are coming that uh, the man or the boys are disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. We want actually, I have not met a parent who want to disempower any. They mm -hmm. want both of them empowered. Mm -hmm. So our program because of the but, but, but historical what they, what they are talking factor, about, uh, Prof, is mm -hmm. that um, yes, there is effort to ensure that both uh, the man and mm -hmm. the woman are educated, I, mm -hmm. but there are so many distractions that are affecting the boy child that most of the time we do not pay attention to saying that, excusing it, that it's just they're going through a phase or a stage? And I, don't, I don't think so because uh, well, if you look at the education system, you are finding both girls and boys, they are all in the same class. And if you look at the homes, I think parents treat them equally. Mm -hmm. There could be more programs for the girls, I agree, mm -hmm. and on girls empowerment, just because of historical factor. You know, in this country we are patriarchal, mm -hmm. and most of the things we see them in the lens of men. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that's why you find this representation of women mm -hmm. is always lagging behind that of men. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 
the effort to empower women should not be also disadvantage the effort to empower the boy. Mm -hmm. So I think we are balancing both. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you are aware, there are some studies actually going on so that we are not making decisions by just opinion. Okay. Uh, to what extent uh, boys not maybe doing as well when, if it comes to comparing with the empowerment of girls. Okay. But I'm not convinced and persuaded that the boys are disadvantaged. They are still ahead. Uh -huh. And we don't want to lose the track on empowering the girl just because maybe there are those There's voices. A perception question. Yeah, but if you do a proper comprehensive study mm -hmm. and that it becomes a pointer, okay. it should in yeah, in device policy. All right, let's cross over to Onyeri County where Martin Munana is there. She he, he, no. He tells me uh, um, that uh, out of the 30 NCAs, that is the 30 wards, there are three women who are elected. Mm -hmm. And then for elective positions, 12 women were uh, nominated. So that gives a total of 15 women out of uh, 42 NCAs, that a percentage of 35%. Martin Mulene, what else is of concern in that area, including the structure of the executive? All right, a very good morning to you, Sam. Uh, like you rightly put it, uh, in, for example, the assembly, uh, you can imagine out of that, only three elected women are uh, just showing you uh, how uh, the people in this particular region uh, were able to elect uh, women uh, in, for example, the National Assembly. When we go to, for example, we go to the uh, constituencies, out of six, all the six uh, constituencies, constituencies elected men. And when we come to uh, the, 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 the executive, uh, the executive has tried to actually balance that because we have five uh, five members of the county executive committee members, that is uh, the CCs, we've got five men and five women. And uh, this morning, Sam, if you allow me, I want to have a conversation uh, with women, uh, of course, who we all know across the country uh, represent quite a large population. Uh, we commonly know, call them uh, Mamamboga. So just get a brief uh, view on their perspective, maybe what should be done to ensure that uh, actually there is representation. Of course, there is the issue of uh, legislation, but as women, what do they think should be the right way or what should be done to ensure that uh, women have proper representation in business and in every sector across the society? Mam karibu sana. Pole kukusumbo ukiwa kazini. Lakini labda utueleze, unaitua nani na utueleze, wewe labda kama mwanamke. Unahisi ni nini labda inafaa kufanywa kwa kikisha kwamba wake wananafasi za uongozi katika county na pia katika serikali kuna pia katika biashara ama sekta mbalimbali. Kwa jina naitwa Elizabeth Wanjohi au Wagekandi, ndio najurikana na kazi. Na vile mimi naweza kusema kwa mama lazima tusaidiwe. Na mama lazima achaguliwe, tumchague kwa sababu mama anajua machida ya mama wale wengine. Kwa hivyo tunaomba serikali isaidie wa mama na kila mjedara wa mama akawa hapo. Ikiwa ni wanaume wawili na wa mama wanakuwa wawili. Na ndio wa mama wakiingia hapa machinani wanajua chida zetu. Kwa hivyo tunaambia hata wakienda huko kwa bunge wa support na huko kwa bunge na hapa kwa county wa supportiwe ndio tupate nafasi ya mambo mingi tupate pesa ya kufanya biashara kwa sababu wanajua chida zetu. Na uh, and maybe some uh, I just speak uh, to uh, someone similar uh, a different woman uh, to get their perspective on the same. Uh, labda mama utueleze wewe unaitwa nani? Na uniambie labda ukiulizwa suluhu iko wapi kuhakikisha kwamba akina mama ana nafasi za uongozi katika maeneo mbalimbali. Kwa majina naitwa Catherine Maina. Eh, anafanya biashara kwa open ya market ningesema mama mama anatakiwa washaguliwe sababu kinua mama umeinua nchi nzima na mama akina mama hakuna kazi wanaume wanafanya ambapo mwanaume mama aweze akafanya kwa hivyo ningesema kwa mama wewe wakipatiwa nafasi hata ikiwa ni wanzad wapatiwe wanzad ndio wanyue nchi Na labda nikikuliza mamu, uh, tunaunanga sa zingine wa mamu wa kisimamu wa chaguli wa mamu ukiwa uh, kwa, kwa uchaguzi. Mara nyingi wanaume ndio huwa wanashinda. Labda uh, kwa nini labda tuoni wa mamu wakiweza kupata ushindi mara nyingi katika uh, kura mbali mbali? Ni kwa fide wa mamu kutoka wa muazoni, hawa kuwa ati wanasendeka na kama wataongoza. Lakini kwa siku hizi, wa mamu wanaongeza hata kushinda wanaume. Eh. Na labda kwa kwa uneza, na labda unona ni kama wanawake wakona uwezo wakueza kushindana na wanaume kisiasa? Eh, wakona, wakona, wakona sawa kushinda wanaume. Sababu wakuna kitu mwanaume anafanya, 
Sam, all right. Uh, Sam, you've heard what the opinions are. Uh, of course, they are saying that there is need for women, uh, of course, to get support. But uh, one of the women feels here that uh, there is nothing actually that a man can do that a woman cannot do. And uh, so they have the opinion that when it comes to a matter's appointment, it would be only fair if women are actually, and uh, they have the opinion that it should actually not be just a third. Uh, they feel that uh, for every woman, there should be a man. For every man, there should be a woman because they feel that one, the women are actually able to do what men can do, but also more importantly, uh, one of the ladies here has expressed that uh, there is need to empower women because she feels that even matters that affect women would be better represented by women, be it in parliament, be it in other areas of leadership, and, sh and so she feels that uh, there is need to make sure that women are empowered, not only to just get that balance, but because the interests of women can be best championed by women. Back to you in studio, Sam, from Nere County, I'm Martin Monene. All right. Thank you so much, Martin, for that. And Waziri, you see the, the conversation around these counties, and that's mm -hmm. what they feel about the representation. And I want to broaden the conversation a little bit and say uh, that uh, out of 21 cabinet secretaries, we have, uh, is it six women six. That, that, that you sit alongside? Mm -hmm. Out of the elected governors in 2017, we had three women, uh, mm -hmm. but now we have uh, just about so the late. Um, so it remains two women out of 47 governors. Mm -hmm. Out of uh, the 47 senators, three were elected. Um, out of uh, 290 members of the National Assembly elected at the constituency level. We had about 22 elected in 2017, but I understand there's an extra one that was elected uh, after the death of Francis Nienze. Uh, so, uh, of the MCAs, 1,450 wards, only 96 were women. So, what is this so difficult? What is this pol political terrain that is so difficult for women to uh, succeed at the ballot so that it's not every other time that we have to nominate a few and then they go to the house and there, there are those questions of they do not have a vote especially at the senate mm, thank you very much i think when women go to elect the position they face several challenges one of the challenges uh, those women wishing to go for elected position face is stereotype and discrimination once you stay you want to be a leader in our patriarchal thinking, every time people think Alinda is a, a man. Therefore, that's one challenge. The next challenge that women face is lack of finances. Mm -hmm. We'll see the kind of campaigns that go around the counties, the whole nation, the one requires to have a lot of uh, funding. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third uh, challenge that they, they, they face is violence. Mm -hmm. Most of the women who have wanted to go to an elected position, mm -hmm. they are faced with emotional abuse, sometimes physical. So uh, th there are many. So what the government is doing is to address each one of those problems. They, to, to, they were first was stereotype and discrimination. Mm -hmm. That's why you see in the leadership and decision making, government has come mm -hmm. up with a program Okay. of education and training so that they prepare those who want to go to elected position. This is done by the government. It's also done by the civil society. So that those people who are visible mm -hmm. are, are kind of identified and they are supported so that they have confidence to know that when you go, there will be those issues of discrimination and you have to rise above that. When they come to finances, there is uh, what we call Kenya Women Finance Trust. It has come up with them the funding proposal where they are saying those women who want to go to elective position can they start saving with the bank so that they'll be given four times okay. when time comes. Mm -hmm. When it comes to violence, it's a criminal offense. Therefore, the government is also trying to protect the women who want to go because it's the interest of the government also to have women going through election rather than nomination. Right. So there are, of course, the, the legal process is there, the police, the, the, the system try to, to protect women who want to go to, for, for elected position. But it's difficult because some of the campaigns are made late at night. So there are many challenges women face. Okay. And that's why you find, unless we confront those challenges by educating the general public, then we are likely to have, to have a struggle for women to get 50-50 okay. as we want. Also, there should be a whole, the government is doing quite a lot regarding educating the general public, and especially many times I'm asked, women are 51%, why don't they elect one of their own? Mm -hmm. That is a very simplistic way of looking at it, because when we are brought up and socialized in the patriarchal, mm -hmm. we, we always have the picture of uh, a leader is a man. But I think with the time this is changing because 
Right from home now, I'm seeing parents where they are trying to empower. Nobody wants their boy to dis be disadvantaged mm -hmm. or a girl. Right. Therefore, this empowering of women so that we have more inclusive society should start right from home, mm -hmm. from institutions like the churches and from the worker place. So let's not uh, just hope that it will just come from the top if we don't socialize. That, that, right that, from the that, that, that's interesting as a government position, mm -hmm. but when you get to the political play field, if I may call it so, you realize a different picture. Mm -hmm. Right now, the mm -hmm. politics of the country is that there's a certain team that calls itself Team Embrace, mm -hmm. and there's another one that calls itself Inua Dada. When you look at these conversations, mm -hmm. uh, Team Embrace is aligned to a certain political leader who is male. Mm -hmm. uh, Inua Dada, the same, they, they are championing for the ambition of another political leader who is male. Mm -hmm. How possible is it for women to mm. champion for issues that are independently or are not, not, not necessarily pegged mm. on the vision of a man, mm. but also even for themselves? Uh, regarding the formation of women groups that are coming, in my view, I think they should be encouraged. If they are leaning besides the idea of a man or not, I, I think both the, the formation of women groups or women movements, so long as they are championing the challenges that the women are facing, it doesn't matter who they lean against, in my view. Mm -hmm. So this formation, if it's a brace or if it's a new mama, at one time, if you listen to them, they are talking about the same thing. They are talking about women getting opportunities politically, socially, culturally, and uh, for that reason, I think the agenda is the same. No, no, the, the question is about, because when you hear them at the, at the podium, when they are making those um, comments, mm. they are attacking their counterparts, not necessarily women, but mm. the men. Mm -hmm. So the agenda of women may be lost in the political noise. How do you safeguard the agenda mm. of women moving forward in the political field? I mm. think the agenda of women should not uh, be, be lost because uh, if, even if they are leaning against a certain political thinking, I think when it comes to what they are championing, they are just mm. wanting to uplift women. Mm -hmm. And I think if there are cases where maybe they are really talking against maybe another woman mm -hmm. or discrediting another leader, that should not be the case. But they should not be focused on empowering women, mm -hmm. more women to come up for elected position. They should be focusing on what is it that prevents women from coming up for elected position. And I think that's, I think, what they are trying to champion. Okay. And when I, I, I listen to what they say because it concerns my department, mm -hmm. I'm aware that they are adding a voice. Because you remember when you got this constitution, if we never want women strong movement, some of the two dance principles we are finding and we'll other freedoms there. and rights, they will not have been there. So having strong women movement, mm -hmm. regardless who they lean uh, on, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time championing women issues. For example, mm -hmm. how do we finance women to be, to be able to go for elective position? How do we train and educate them so that they are aware the prejudices and discrimination they face, right. they can overcome them? And uh, how do we prevent them? How can they realize when violence is coming okay. and how the two handle it? Those are some of the things. And the women are also championing food security uh, uh, and the nutrition because Women, in fact, the ones I've seen come, to, come, come on this movement, they are okay. championing of food security, they are supporting universal health care, they are supporting the big four of government, agenda of government. So for me, I think they are doing more good as adding to the voice mm -hmm. of women to the debate okay. uh, than maybe leaning on any political orientation. All, all right, let's talk about a little bit about what you may have direct uh, control on because uh, yeah. politics is for politicians. Yes, <laughs> I agree. And that is that the Public Service Commission, <laughs> We, uh, I was able to look at a Public Service Commission diversity policy of 2016. I don't mm. know whether that's the latest or there's a new one. Okay. Uh, the baseline survey based on, I mean, the baseline survey of 2013 to 14, it showed that um, the ratio of men to women in the public service stood at 70 to 30. Mm. Um, the, the policy making levels, you had about 23 percent versus, uh, of course, the one third requirement. Mm. And the constitution was passed in 2010, so that was uh, six years down the line, and it had not not improved. What is the status right now? If you look at the public service um, that we have now, how many women do we have and how many men do we have mm -hmm. uh, before we can get into the, the cadre of the jobs that they do? Okay. I think uh, it, for me it's very hard now to say generally the actual point because people are always hired and they also retire on daily basis. Mm -hmm. But we, when, when you look at generally, we're having in the public service 30, 70 proportion. Mm -hmm. That women, 70. That means we have already achieved mm -hmm. the requirement of the, con of the constitution. Not yet the, the only 
The only challenge comes maybe at the very top, mm -hmm. where we are 28 percent, 27, 28 percent, mm -hmm. which is not very bad compared with what the, was there before the constitution. Mm -hmm. So there has been some gains, there has been some progress, but we should build. I mean, you should protect these gains while we are building, uh, mm -hmm. looking at what is it that uh, we can do to, uh, to increase the women. For example, at the senior position, we are encouraging women not to think that those positions are interest for anybody. They should be able to apply. Mm -hmm. If you look at the commissions right now, the constitution commissions, right. all of, uh, more, we actually have uh, been able to achieve close to nine are chaired by women. Mm -hmm. These are women who just weren't applied, they were interviewed, so there are some gains if you look at the constitution, mm -hmm. the constitution commissions, right. where you are finding, if you look at the TSC commission of administrative, I can count very many, right. that now they are chaired by women. That never used to be the case with the first phase, mm -hmm. the first group of the constitution commission, there were very few women. Right. Now, there are more women than men. Mm -hmm. so, 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 the, so, so, so those so. ones, are, the reason why they have come is because of this education, empowerment, uh -huh. and uh, being encouraged, and the fact that also they have seen those who have been there have done a good job we also require a role model a mentor okay. somebody who can see yes it can be done can so, so th th that's with the constitutional commissions mm. and probably at the very top of mm. uh, th this public institution that's why we need them because that's the decision making levels but, but what's your comment about um, the rest of the cadres that uh, women get employed into in the rest of the public service and mm. also if you may spend some time to comment about the public service mm. in as far as the equality of pay uh, that mm. uh, equal work equal pay mm. if whether it's a man or a woman, mm. uh, how, how much progress have we made in as far as that is concerned? I think when it comes to equal work and equal pay, I think if, I don't think if, you are, if I was on job group J, a, a senior government official who had just joined mm -hmm. and maybe done three years, mm -hmm. I don't think men are paid more than women. Mm -hmm. In that case, we are at par. Mm -hmm. uh, unless now maybe when it comes to uh, some of other opportunities that come within the workplace, mm -hmm. for example, maybe somebody being called to do a certain task where they are remunerated, mm -hmm. maybe a task force, mm -hmm. or where they are called upon maybe to do some uh, travel, to do an assignment, right. we might find men being more available than women. Mm -hmm. Maybe total sum, then you can say uh, the total sum of that you, they could, women could get a little bit more. Okay. But when they come to where you are employed on a certain job group, but the reasons why sometimes maybe women give excuses why maybe they are not able to travel to mm -hmm. go and take advantage of that extra job so that you have more. issues. Yeah, because of family issues and all that, which is not to be respected. Mm -hmm. In fact, right now we are working two ones. How can we um, attach some economic value mm -hmm. to some of the work that women do that are never recognized. Okay. Like caregiving work. Most of the women take care of the children, they take care of the elderly, and I think some countries are moving towards uh, recognizing economic gain of such work that is done by women. Mm -hmm. Until such a time mm -hmm. that we recognize what women do as unpaid work, you right. will not make progress. Look at the woman who is at housewives at home and is bringing up children, taking care of the family until maybe when the children are, are a bit grown up. It's making a major contribution at the national level All right. and it should be recognized. Wazira would not be forgiven if I don't ask you this question and that is to do with that pupil that committed suicide because of um, um, the situation of every other month and uh, that this, that's a pupil at Kabiangek Primary School in Konain constituency mm. who was found hanging from a tree last Friday. Uh, apparently she was called by a teacher because of uh, that situation mm. and uh, I'm just wondering, your ministry is responsible for distribution mm. of sanitary mm. towels. Mm. What has been the challenge that you're not able to supply towels, including uh, for a girl like this that had to lose their lives because mm. of what is normal? Let me sum first say it's unfortunate and my heart, heartfelt condolences for this girl who passed on. And uh, you know that it is a government commitment to provide the sanitary pants for all girls in primary and secondary school so that you can keep them in school. The more you are in school, the more you are likely to do better. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the responsibility of providing sanitary towel actually is with the Minister of Education, mm -hmm. particularly the Basic Education Act 2013. Mm -hmm. This is very clearly. Mm -hmm. But for some kind of interest, we find that maybe political interference, it was moved to my ministry. Right. My ministry does not have the structures, you know, in terms of logistics, where the school are the way the Minister of Education could be done. So in the last, last one year, we did the provision of procurement, mm -hmm. which brought a lot of logistical problems because 
we kind of send these are procured in Nairobi and distributed to every school in this country. I think that caused some procurement challenges and uh, the way they were procured, it was not the most effective way. So when the public procurement oversight authority looked at it, they, f they identified some flaws. Mm -hmm. So the procurement was cancelled. That's actually why they were not given in the last financial year the sanitary town. But now it has moved back to Ministry of Education the funding has been a problem. We have been having inadequate pro, uh, funding. Now it has been uh, given to the Ministry of Education. We are also pursuing just adding that gender voice mm -hmm. so that the girls remain in school to have the budget increased. And the Ministry of Education has moved, in fact, to make a decision that sanitary pans will be provided or procured from those who are locally manufacturing them. Okay. Because they are there. Rather than import and we lose the job by having a lot of uh, importing uh, such products other than promoting but, but, the but, but, but clearly it was zero. So we are thinking uh -huh. by in October, uh -huh. towards the end of October, the sanitary should be in but, 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 but clearly it was zero. Um, the, the, the complication of procurement affecting the lives of mm. uh, girls, including this one? Mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate. And um, of course, this is a story which is, uh, which is very unfortunate. We don't know if totally that is what caused the, her to commit the suicide. But even if it is, okay. there are other girls who are suffering. Mm -hmm. we, we, I take responsibility where the government has not been able to provide and we are moving very fast working with the Minister of Education and you know also mm -hmm. procurement issues mm -hmm. regarding government procurement has always been surrounded by a lot of All integrity right. issues. Right. So protecting the integrity of procurement and also getting the product has been a challenge but moving forward we want to keep our eyes on the ball that the girl has the sanitary pad oh, oh, right. for the entire year. All right, I don't know that you have time to take a look at uh, some of the feedback that you've been sending through on Twitter as well as on SMS line 22422 or on Twitter, the hashtag to use is daybreak at uh, Citizen TV Kenya. This is Peter Obure says that uh, please ask the CS why is it that, well, I have seen this question before, mm -hmm. so I think we just keep it. And mm -hmm. next is uh, who? Um, this is Maina from Nairobi. Can you please ask the CS when they are doing recruitment in the public service because there's a job I applied in February this year and every time I check status from my portal, it always says it's a processing. Are there delays in pro processing ap job applications? I, I think because of the shortage of jobs in this country, uh -huh. when you advertise one job, you mm -hmm. are likely to get very many applications. So in the process of processing, it might be delay, okay. but I think there are jobs which are applied in February mm -hmm. and they the process of uh, being being processed. All right. The internship program is also on uh -huh. and it's about 3,600. Uh -huh. So I think all this is moving at the same time. Okay. Obadiah Moge from Nandi, you say in an election, women voters don't vote for women candidates. Why? Yet it said they are majority. Of course, you responded to that earlier on. So uh, thank you so much for making time for us and wish you everything good at the 12th Commonwealth Women's Affairs Minister's meeting uh, that uh, runs since yesterday until 20th, uh, 20th of September. As you said, mm -hmm. you're expecting that uh, 54 countries of the Commonwealth will be represented and all the best uh, with thank that. you thank you very much thank oh, you oh, thank all you. right so